What's up everyone? This is Robert Cornelius and today I'm going to be talking you through the layers that went into creating this image of my friend Shelby Robinson. So this is where we started. I just went through, you know, this was my base image and then I started finding other parts from different images that I really liked. I really liked the way the hair was flipping up from these couple of images so I just sort of layer masked those in from a couple other shots and then down here I really liked all this extra movement and pieces flying off giving it more motion and then over here I like this hand better this one was too covered up okay so then once I had all those pieces I merged them all together and cut her out. Uh, then I took a couple images that I shot when I was in Wales. Um, so these are from, where is, there we go. Anyway, these were from uh, top of a mountain in Wales. One of my favorite days ever. Uh, and I have a huge library of images from that day because it was beautiful. So anyway, I plopped her on top of this mountain knowing that uh, the lighting and everything didn't quite match, but I was going to beat it down a lot. I actually picked a color right from the background of the image I shot, so right from here, so I knew that the feathers and things would fall on top of it nicely. So I took that color and then I turned the opacity down on these and I also layer masked some of them away so it, it just was more see-through so you could get that overall sort of dingy greenish tone behind them. And then I brightened up the sky a little bit, darkened down the whole image, <laughs> lightened the whole image. So basically I merged the two images together. It is not a clean merge in the middle because I had her on top of it covering up the crease, but I really liked this part of that picture and this part of that picture, and they went together close enough, plus I knew I'd be adding a bunch of dust and birds and all this stuff, so it didn't have to be perfect back there. Uh, I also merged it together and blurred it a bit, and we lightened it a bit more, and then I took the merged cutout image of Shelby, and I duplicated it, and I did a shadow highlight, so we'll just do it real quick to show you. Image adjustments, shadow highlights. Uh, sometimes if you haven't used it, when you open it, it'll look like this. But if you check more options, you can mess around with darkening your shadows. And, sorry, darkening your highlights and lightening your shadows. So this is definitely something that can be taken too far, but I really like the effect it gives. And I really wanted to do this almost blown out edge light. So I shot the front a little dark. So I knew I would use this to lighten up her front a bit. Anyway, so here's that layer. And then I did some painting on an overlay layer just to kind of highlight her face a bit. And you know, I really want you to look here. So I definitely brightened up that area. I also wanted her to look a little bit dirty. She actually had some makeup on to make her look like she had some dirt on her face, but I just enhanced that a bit, just painting with black and white on an overlay layer. Did another shadow highlight, turn that down some. And then this is a little subtle, but I thought this was looking a little too bright orange. So I desaturated that a little bit. And then somewhere in here, before I did this dark layer, I added in the lens flare. Let me see if I can <laughs> dig up through my zillions of layers and find that because it makes the that color adjustment look much different. I think it's this one. Yes. Okay, so... I grabbed this awesome uh, real lens flare image from a raw exchange package. I'll have a link in the description if you want to go and snag those for yourself. So once I had that on, you know, I liked the way it was kind of blowing it out. And then I did this color balance, um, selective color, you know, I went into the blacks and darkened them down a little bit, put a little yellow in and a little bit of cyan and just kind of gave that some more dimension, but I wanted to show you with the lens flare on because without it, it looks way too dark. So it was kind of compensating for that. 
and came in here to the hand. It was looking really red, so I took some of the, the like red and magenta out of that. Okay, started darkening the hand. I think at this point in the edit, I started adding in the bird. So it started. Something like this. I ended up having to cut the feet off because there was a very gross dead animal in its feet uh, and it just was not working out too well for what I wanted. So I took that out and I actually got feet from a different hawk and photoshopped them in there. And so then here I started, this is just a normal layer and I was selecting like a dark brown from somewhere in here uh, and just painting in a shadow as I thought, you know, where the light would fall to hopefully somewhat convincingly get this bird to look like it was actually on her arm. Even though technically a bird of prey would never land on an arm this low, you'd have to raise your arm up here because it wants a higher perch, but it's a fantasy image, so give me a break, bird people. Whoever you are, you bird people watching my Photoshop thing. Anyway, uh, then I did some layer styles, some inner shadows, but done as um, edge light. You can switch all that around. Uh, it's normally an inner shadow, but if you set it to soft light or overlay, pick a lighter color, and then you can pick which direction your light's coming from and get this nice edge light thing. So, you know, because it's a composite, I'm constantly going, where's my light coming from? What's my light doing? And because she has this super bright edge light on the top, I had to make sure the hawk matched. So, there's some more digital painting, shading on an overlay layer to extra enhance the light more, match it to Shelby. And then at some point, yeah, I moved it down a little bit. It was a little too close to her and kind of blending in there. So after I'm happy with layers, I'll, you know, like I got the hawk to a point I liked, I duplicate and merge and then I just group it and then turn it off. So then I have this one solid merged layer, but then if I need to go back, I still have my layers. Um, and then I did a shadow highlight to him. And this is a little detail that I find quite pleasing. Um, I had already painted the eyes to kind of match Shelby's, but it just wasn't looking right. And then I realized, well, it should have the same little catch light in the eye as hers. And then I realized I could just use her eye. So that is actually Shelby's eye put on the hawk. So I think that's kind of, kind of neat. Plus it's the only two blue things in the whole image. It's a very warm image. And then they both have these blue eyes. So which also in my story driven brain is kind of like, oh, they have this weird magical connection and they, who knows, they can, you know, telepathically talk to each other or whatever. It's a fantasy image, just roll with it. Okay, so then I did more shading. This is just, again, a normal layer, black, and it's all clipped down so I can paint outside and it only paints on the bird. Here's a little bit of edge lighting on the feet. More overall shading. Okay, and then we added this bird up in the sky. Uh, oh, this is actually fog behind. I did another duplicate and merge, so now I have you know, I got everything to a point where I liked it with her and the bird. So I duplicate and merged all of those and then turn all of these layers off below. So this, I actually, rather than picking a background color and painting over top and trying to lighten him down or her, who's to say the gender of this bird, I just turned the overall layer down to 52%, even though, yeah, there's some, you know, cloud texture that you might see through it, but it would just kind of blend him into the background really nicely. Uh, and then I also did some layer styles on that as well to play up this bright edge light. And, you know, there's atmosphere and everything in the air, so the bird's definitely going to be lighter because it's farther away. Uh, and then I did somewhere in here. There. Yep, there's a second bird who is also uh, lightened and painted to, you know, be set farther back in the background. I also blurred both of them. Once you get in there, you can see this is much blurrier than the nice crisp detail on the hood. Same with this one. He's not quite as blurry because I wanted that one a little farther away. So just little tricks to create some depth. And then I did some, 
some high sharpen, I'm sorry, high pass sharpening. So duplicate a layer and then go to filter other and then high pass. And I do one that is set to overlay and one to soft light. And the overlay one is a much smaller number, like maybe 2%. Filter other high pass. So I would do one way up here, you know, 60, 70 something. And I set that one to soft light and then I duplicate it again and do one down here and set that one to overlay. And this one gets the really fine little tiny details and kind of crisps everything up. And then the other one is sort of the overall mid-tone, um, just like shadows and highlights and just gives it a nice effect. Again, that can be way overdone and get cartoony. Yeah, you know, I also turn these down a bit. That's like 40%, but it just really kind of gives a bit more of that, you know, almost like an illustration sharpness to the details that I really like. I did a little bit more color correction, put a little bit of cyan in there. Uh, this was another duplicate and merge. Uh, I smoothed out her skin a little bit. I had kind of over sharpened it so it was looking a little rough. Then I added, this is pretty subtle, but I added some smoke just to give the overall image some more texture and movement. Uh, this is another image from Raw Exchange. I'll link to that in the description as well. And then I did some painting with black around the edges just to give it a bit of vignette. I didn't want to go at the top because it's very bright and that would look strange because the lights are coming from up there. So I only darkened the sides and the bottom just to really focus you in on the middle. And I threw a photo filter adjustment layer on there just to warm it up a little more. And it wouldn't be a Robert Cornelius image if I didn't throw a bunch of dust on top because I am obsessed with particles and I love the way it looks and I will never not do it. I mean, you know, if you pay me not to do it, I might not do it. But if it's one of my images, you can probably bet that there is a little bit of particle action going on. These again are from Raw Exchange. I will link to those as well. And I actually, for these, I did a bit of motion blur because they were too perfectly just like little dots and there's all this, you know, stuff blowing up. So I thought they'd be kind of moving. So I gave them just a little bit of motion blur. And an overall selective color where I pushed just a little bit of blue into the shadows and just a little bit of yellow into the highlights. I still wanted it to read overall as a warm image, but I just wanted to give it a little bit of coolness in the shadows. And then I darkened up her jeans. I wanted to start to make them look a little less like jeans. And then I also darkened around the bird a little bit because it has a bright edge figured if I just sort of darken around here, it kind of pops the hawk off a little more. So I'm constantly looking at values and going, what do I want to stand out? And, you know, should I lighten this or darken that to, to make something stand out a bit more? This is more painting. You know, I really want you to look here and at the hawk's face. So I darkened the bottom of here and the bottom of there. And then also did some highlight painting in the hair just to kind of pick out some strands and give it a bit more depth and shine. And darken down the edges even more. And then I decided, because I had thrown the flare on top and then I kept darkening things down, darkening things down with adjustment layers and painting and it kind of lost that glow. So I ended up just duplicating the flares, bringing them up top and turning it down to like basically about 30% opacity. So just a little bit more of that hazy glow over everything. And it also kind of melded this hawk into the background a bit more and just did some nice stuff. Okay, so then at this point, I duplicated and merged everything. Oh, I also did go around. This area had some funkiness going on when I cut it out. So I, I went through and pen tooled it to, to get some of the detail back in the highlights. So that's, that's how it looked after. Anyway, so at this point, I, I was pretty much happy with it. And I always reach a point in the images when I show it to my wife, Sarah, 
Uh, she's cakeoversteak.com. You should check her out. And then I also send it to my cousin slash best friend, James Sterling. You should check out his work. It is James Sterling Photo. I'll link to all of these in the description as well. Uh, anyway, he is also a photographer and my wife is a photographer, but she photographs food. Anyway, I always get to a point in an image where I send it to what I call my creative safety net and I let them both look at it and sort of get notes from them. And so I'm actually going to hop over to the image I got back from James. So I send it to him and then he sends it back with some things circled or sometimes he'll edit little parts and say, you know, maybe look at right here. And then I kind of take his thoughts and use what of it I like, which is usually all of it because he's brilliant. Uh, but that's a really great technique to use. So if you have someone close to you who has any sort of an artistic, artistic eye, even if it's not for exactly the kind of work you do, uh, it's pretty sweet to get someone else's eyes on something you've been looking at for so long. So anyway, um, he helped me out with a few little things. It, at this point, it's pretty subtle, just, um, you know, some like blurring of edges and he smoothed out her skin a little bit. Cause like I said, I kind of over sharpened it. So this is where it was when they sent it to him. And then I just kept working on this file. So after I got it back from him, I decided to add in some extra things. So I put in more shading here again to pop the hawk out a little bit. And I thought this arm was looking a little bright. So I darkened that down a little bit. I decided to add some more in here. It was just looking very like there's all bright and flowy over here. And then it was just not a lot going on. And I kind of had this like just straight line right here. And I wanted to interrupt that with some similar textures to what I had on the left. And I feel like it just kind of balanced it out a bit better. So I ended up cutting out pieces from another image and bringing them in. And then uh, more color correction on that just to kind of blend it with the rest so it was a little light to begin with so I darkened that down so anyway oh and because duh it's fantasy I decided to rework her ears to be pointy elf ears and uh that was about it then we have this awesome epic Shelby Robinson elf hawk person and uh yeah that is how this came to be hopefully that was helpful let me know if you have any questions in the comments below and thanks for watching.